What's up, everybody? It's Zeke. I'm um, just going to show some uh, records that I got recently. Um, this one that's playing now is Jerry and the Pacemakers, I'll Be There. Great Mercy B record. This is their third record on Lori. The way these things were pressed, they're just they could have withstood a nuclear war, you know. Um, they're just so, I mean, just durable. Extremely thick and durable. <laughs> this is great, charming music, you know. Mercy B, like early Beatles kind of stuff, British Invasion kind of stuff. It's uh, it's old, you know, early 60s, but I, I really love it. And like I say, it's just very charming and very um, <laughs> an early rock and roll, but um, based on, you know, American roots, early early rock, and it's such a, it's such a charming, great record. Um, <clears throat> I got this sealed copy of ELO out of time. Now, I, I've out of the blue, I've had this before, but this was sealed and it was real cheap, so I picked it up. Um, I, p I picked up these Popol Vuh records. I don't know if I've showed these or not already, but these really nice Popol Vuh records. Uh, Inden Garden Pharaohs in the Pharaohs Garden. These are Italian pressings of this kind of a kraut rock group. Um, Ein Schager and Simon Schager. Uh, great, uh, beautiful records. I mean, both of those are beautiful records. Um, those were really amazing to find, I think. <clears throat> So here's a group I got turned on to by um, Satellite Radio, uh, Deep Tracks on, on Sirius Satellite FM, it's called Space Opera, and I, I like this group, really, really 70s kind of group, 1972 on CBS, uh, this is a radio station a promo, and it's, you know, it's just not something you find all the time, this is a total 70s rock piece, I, I really love it. Um, and they get real proggy, but they they also do just straight 70s rock, and they do uh, um, like country-ish kind of, uh, almost like the Birds or the Flying Burrito Brothers or the Eagles or Ca California soft rock kind of country rock stuff. They can do that, too. They do all kinds of stuff. This nice UK import of Jimmy Cliff. I love Jimmy Cliff. This is, you know, not probably, this is a, some kind of a comp to bootleg thing, but really awesome. I really love it. Great music. Here's an obscure uh, 60s folk record. Um, it gets a little psychedelic, actually. Bruce Murdoch. This is great. This is a really clean DJ copy on Stormy Forest, which was um, Richie Haven's label. Richie Haven's discovered him. Um, he was playing a New York Canadian guy. He stopped playing after the 60s. He, really, I love this. Uh, I would compare that to like Phil Oaks or. Um, you know, Greenwich Village folk. I, I love it. It's awesome. Uh, got this Guess Who record. Still in shrink. A really nice copy of this. This is uh, on MGM. And uh, it's got this great album art. It looks like Greek, almost like a Greek relief, ancient Greek relief. Um, or an ancient Greek. But not in that style, but no. But anyway, this is. Not like their 70s albums, you know. Not like Share of the Land and all this kind of stuff at all. I and mean, this is a early one. I don't have a lot of the Guess Who stuff. This is kind of rare to find this. Um, and uh, this is Canadian. This is Canadian press, and they're a Canadian group. So I was really happy to find this. This is straight 60s rock, you know, early 60s rock. I love it. It's awesome. Um, New Heavenly Blue, okay. Now this group, this is the, this is Dave Brubeck's uh, Dave Brubeck's sons. Uh, and the only thing that I have by them, other than this, is Larry Coriel's a project with Larry Coriel and Dave Brubeck's sons. Um, and, but that's jazz, that's fusion jazz. This is straight '70s rock, and and they're great. I mean, they can really play. They can they can like it gets psyched. The cover looks real real psyched, but it's not. It's more just like '70s straight rock, uh, classic rock sounding, but it can get psychedelic at points. It's awesome. John Cale and Terry Riley, both great artists. I don't personally think this is their strongest work. I like this, but th there are a lot more interesting albums from both of them than these two. The cover kind of looks like the f family, the group family. If you've ever seen their album, it looks like a doll's house like this. Uh, this is interesting music. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like it, but I don't like it nearly as much as some of their other stuff. Tower of Power, Bump City. This is one of two real nice 70s soul records that I got. I got this one and I got, um, <clears throat> unrelated, but of the same era, I got this record, Luther. 
which is Luther Vandross's uh, first record. This is a promo, radio station promo. This is kind of, obviously, this Bump City, um, you know, here's the back of the Luther record. This this is a nice little funky soul record, mostly soul, and you know how he sings, and you know how his style, Luther Vandross, can be kind of um, church singing, kind of can be kind of syrupy, sappy. In this instance, it's not particularly romantic and sappy. It's actually pretty good. Um, but you can see that this was a radio promo, and they, like, X'd it out. They were like, do not play this on the radio, because they just didn't think it was radio-friendly. But um, obviously Luther Vandross found a huge audience later, but this Tower of Power record is really a nice little funky 70s soul, uh, funk soul record. Uh, and they're kind of overshadowed and overlooked compared to like their contemporaries like the Meters or uh, the Neville Brothers or, you know, groups like those. And th this is an excellent, this is actually really excellent. This has some high points which are outstanding. I mean, they're, you know, they're definitely, it's not, it's not 100% awesome, but there's definitely some high points in it that are terrific. I guess I found this James Vincent Culmination. Awesome uh, progressive jazz record, uh, almost fusion jazz record. Uh, I think it's amazing. Really, really good. And uh, and this is on Columbia, okay? So this is a major label. I, saw, I found this on the VC. People told me about this from the VC. Culmination, very good. This record I had never heard of before at all. And it's private press, too, so I've probably never seen another one. It's called the All Right Family Band. Um, so automatically I was turned on to it just by the cover. <clears throat> the cover, uh, first of all, it's private press, so that that was weird. But then the cover, they're called the All Right Family Band, so that kind of reminded me of like the Flower Traveling Band or um, like a Japanese uh, psych, you know, a Flower Traveling Band or like the, uh, what's that one called? The, um, another Japanese uh, psych group that I'm thinking of. I can't think of what they're called now, but... Um, <clears throat> this this is Hawaiian. Um, it says Maui, but then on the back it says uh, Sunlight Sky Saxon, formerly of the Seeds. That was the last Seeds album, was Sunlight Sky Saxon. So I was stoked to find this, and this is really good too. Awesome '70s rock record. I love it. Um, I found this nice Italian prog record, Timer Reverbieri. Real weird, 1976, it's late 70s, but it's, it's almost mathematical, geeky, computer-ish. It's awesome, though. I love it. Um, let's see, Graham Bond. Kind of like Spencer Davis. This is, the, the, he recorded on Vertigo. This is on Mercury. Mercury was the parent label of Vertigo. Um, we put our magic on you. So this is a US pressing, um, Graham Bond with magic. M A G I C K. They sound like Spencer Davis. They sound like Joe Cocker. They sound like a lot of the UK artists that were kind of blues rock artists that were. Then it can get psychedelic too. It's a nice psych piece, actually, really great piece. I'm happy to have it. Um, but yeah, I mean they're really high high quality musicianship too. John Mayle, you know, the UK musicians that were inspired by American R&B and blues artists. Uh, very good. They do some covers of. Um, <clears throat> They do like your requisite cover of what I say. Ray Charles, John Mayall did that. Spencer Davis did that. You know, um, uh, Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood did that. They all did that. You know, um, this is awesome Kinks piece. This is one I did not have. A really clean copy of Lola. Uh, Lola versus Power Man and the Money Ground. U.S. press of this. This is a really nice U.S. press. I'm really happy to have it. This is a fantastic record. Great record classic record which sold a lot but yet I can never find it uh, I didn't have this believe it or not this is not an original press this is just it's still in shrink and it has the sticker the original sticker which is kind of what I liked about it uh, but it has a barcode so it's after 1983 also it has a little staining here uh, unfortunately but it was super cheap so I was like sure I'll pick it up I'm sure I'll find a better copy somewhere if I sell that but uh, there's only one Roy Orbison Ain't that the truth? He recorded this is on MGM. He recorded on Monument a lot of his early stuff. Uh, I love Roy Orbison, man. Love it. Love to have, love to get this. I just think he was a great talent. Uh, it was such an authentic uh, talent. Awesome early uh, rock musician. Contraband, Time and Space. Uh, this is pretty obscure um, fusion record. Br uh, really good fusion record too. And these guys played with everybody. I mean they. 
these were young, like, like music school, fresh out of, you know, music, young in their early 20s kind of musicians, but they were uh, experienced, because, like, this guy here played with uh, John Clemmer, and he played with Ernie Watts and Counter, and John Handy, he played with Tubby Hayes Quartet, Charlie Monroe, John Stevens, Trevor Watts, Spontaneous Music Ensemble, this dude played with Oliver Nelson, Thelma Houston, um, Shelly Mann, Don Ellis Orchestra, um, Dave Pritchard had played with the Gary Burton Quartet, Brian Moffat had played with Larry Hutcherson, so I mean these guys that were experienced, you know, for young, such young guys, they had played with a lot of people, and, uh, and that's a very good record too. Um, this is a promo copy of this, Eric, uh, Eric Kloss, Love and All That Jazz, with Groove Holmes on Prestige. You see, it's a preview copy. Uh, great record. Man, I'm very happy to find I love classic Prestige records. I love Groove Holmes, and I especially love Eric Kloss, and this is a classic jazz record, you know. It's not... The Blue Note records, I think, are a little bit higher order, but I love Prestige. I still think they're, they're very fun records. Um, Black Sheep... 1975 on Capitol. Look at this great cover. Awesome cover. This is a straight 70s rock band that is just as good as like Free or Early Bad Company and the and the singing is just as good as, as Paul Rogers. Honestly, honestly, it's really, it's, it's a great 70s obscure gem and it's, it should have been a classic rock album. I really don't know why. Maybe just because, you know, there were other bands already kind of doing this thing. But look at these, how motley these guys look. Look how 70s Road doggish they look. I mean, these guys are just grizzled, grizzled. I mean, it's a little cliche, but it's still pretty awesome. You know who they kind of remind me of? They kind of remind me of like they group Stillwater and Almost Famous. They're kind of like a cliched '70s rock group, but but still great. I love it. Um, so Atmospheres featuring uh, Clive Stevens and Friends. Awesome fusion record. Really kind of a gem. It has John Abercrombie on guitar. Um, from Oregon. It's Billy Cobham on drums, one of the all-time great uh, fusion drummers. Um, Steve Kahn is playing guitar, one of the great fusion uh, guitarists, amazing. And Ralph Towner is on the piano too. And uh, Ralph Towner, famous ECM artist. This is a great record. I really love it. As a matter of fact, an excellent fusion record. The Shocking Blue. I've been wanting this for a long time on Colossus. Awesome 60s uh, psych pop. Pop psych. Uh, excellent record. Heavy on the psych. Light on the pop. Really great piece. Very, very 60s-ish. Um, like, I don't know how to describe that quality of the 60s, uh, late 60s pop, you know, that it was like um, future-ish, uh, sort of like atomic age. For the, You know, you had like the atomic age in the 50s, there's like an atomic age in the late 60s too, where they're kind of like f looking to the future and then they're kind of, uh, it's like this, it was amazing, I love that, I love it. Uh, Paul Blay and Scorpio. Later he was made, married to Carla, uh, Carla Blay. Um, Dave Holland plays bass on this. Barry Alshul plays the drums. This is on Milestones, uh, which was, the parent company was Fantasy. And, uh... A really, really good jazz record, progressive jazz record. I mean, beautiful, you know, all instrumental, extremely well played. I mean, this extremely well produced. Uh, just a beautiful jazz record, in fact. I think, like, the jazz heads like um, uh, Dr. Deadwax would really get off on this. Uh, you know, you know what I'm going to say, give a shout out to um, on the Shocking Blue. Uh, I think it was Bo um, that really was talking about this on Facebook. I can't remember now. John Fred and his Playboy band, Agnes English. Kind of a classic uh, 60s pop record, which I didn't have, uh, on Jewel. And this is an original, uh, or Paula, rather. Yeah, Division of Jewel. Yeah, Paula. I have some nice Paula 45s. I was really happy to get this. There's other covers of this, too, uh, with the alternate cover that I've seen. Uh, this is one I've wanted for a long time, actually. Um, this is a, a CJ and Company Devil's Gun on Westbound. Westbound was a great soul label, 70s soul label. I love the cover of this. I mean, look at the cover art on this. This is such a badass uh, record. Really love it. Was happy to find it. Uh, Eastbound was the was the jazz version of Westbound. 
Warner was the parent company. The Eastbound Jazz Records extremely collectible. Th this is all Leonard Cohen stuff. And man, these were cheap. On Columbia, songs from a room. These are all classics. Leonard Cohen, one of the amazing songwriters. And then this is just filling out my Leonard Cohen collection because I didn't have a lot of these. Death of a Ladies Man. Phil Spector produced this, by the way. The great Phil Spector, one of the all-time great uh, producers ever. Uh, kind of a nut job, but an amazing, amazing producer. So this one's called a New Skin for the Old Ceremony on Columbia, and this is an original um, uh, Canadian. And so the, I think I believe the U.S. had a different cover. So there actually are variations on this cover. But he was Canadian, Leonard Cohen. He is Canadian. He's still alive. Songs of Love and Hate. Very famous record. Uh, this is American. This is not Colombian. Uh, but yeah, very happy to have it. So that's it. And I recorded this on a different camera because my other one was screwing up, wasn't giving me volume. So if you watched that, a couple people did. Three people did. Um, Trish watched it and Garner watched it. Uh, and, uh, and Rob in Boston uh, uh, watched it. Thank you guys for watching that. I'm very sorry that it didn't have volume. But uh, everybody, peace out and uh, take care, okay?